Coming up next on Cooking with MFRD, we have some firehouse favorites to spice up your get-togethers with family and friends, including a bacon recipe that's the bomb. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with MFRD. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and we have a great lineup for you today. Captain Tony Lahue from Station 3 on A Shift is here, and he's going to be cooking up some chili, but not just any chili, everything but the kitchen sink chili. You're going to need to get together the following ingredients. Four packs of Old El Paso chili mix, or your favorite chili mix, five cans of chili beans, two hot, three mild, one can of black beans, a small can of sliced black olives, one pack of fresh sliced mushrooms, three cans of Del Monte canned chili tomatoes, two pounds of ground chuck, one and a half pounds of stew beef, and the following seasonings, paprika, chili powder, cumin, salt, pepper, and garlic salt to taste. Okay, Tony, walk us through your everything but the kitchen sink chili. Well, like I said, you mentioned the ingredients. Um, basically, you take all the canned stuff and you add it to a pot together. And you want that to heat up for, until you get it up to a, a slow boil. You don't want to overheat it. And you don't want to heat it up too fast. So I'd say about a medium heat, you know, whatever suits you. You got to stir a lot because if you don't stir a lot, it'll stick. And the black beans uh, mix well with the chili beans. And when you use chili beans, you got your choice of medium and hot. That's a personal taste. Pretty much all chili is a personal taste, if you ask me. But what I like to do is I like to mix them because I like stuff that's spicy, but I don't want it overly spicy. I like a lot of flavor to it, not just heat. Right. So I'll usually put like half hot, half uh, mild. And that's a good start for it because you're going to add some other heat to it along the way, too, with stuff like uh, you know, your paprika and all of that. And uh, I usually use El Paso chili seasoning, but it wasn't available today. So basically, I did a bit of an experiment and just kind of come up with my own, which in my opinion is the best way to do chili anyway. I'm using just uh, Kroger original chili seasoning here, and then after I get it up to heat, I'll pretty much just... Uh, and I'll pour these in for you, sure. if, you if you've got some yeah. other things you need to be doing. Yeah. But uh, as I, I just put two in for right now, because like I said, as it heats up, it, the taste changes and you want to kind of check that as you go along. Right now what I'm doing is browning uh, two pounds of hamburger because this is a, a good party recipe or like when I invite my friends over for watch a football game. And uh, so I always cook a lot of it. You know, you can actually make smaller amounts of it with, uh, you know, less ingredients. And as I heat the meat, I like to add uh, some garlic salt to it to taste also. For me, that's a lot. For some people, maybe not as much. So you season the meat as you go along, and again, like I said before, it's basically open to interpretation. You can eat it however you want to, you know. Season it as you see fit. What do you usually put in your meat to season it? Do you just use garlic salt? Yeah, or? I, the hamburger itself has a pretty good taste, you know, in my opinion. Uh, a little bit of salt will help. If you don't like garlic, you can just go with salt. And you got to be careful how much salt you use because you can over salt it in a hurry. Because uh, beef is one of those things that will absorb the flavor, or excuse me, ground beef will absorb the flavor really easily. So I like to use the garlic flavor as much as I do the salt. So basically I just add enough of that, and I've been doing it long enough, I just kind of do it by eye, but you know, everybody's different. So you have to sort of kind of experiment, get your own idea for it. And this is a multitasking recipe also, because <laughs> while you're browning the meat, you have to continuously stir the chili yes, as well. Yes, so. that's the important thing. And taste test everything along as well. So. <laughs> yeah, but don't test taste it while the meat's still raw. That could be. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Put the mushrooms in. Go ahead, okay. you can add those. Okay. We've got the fresh sliced mushrooms. We're going to add to the chili mixture here. And I know a lot of people say he just put mushrooms in chili, and uh, again, it's one of those things I've experimented with over the years. I really like mushrooms because mushrooms is another one of those foods that really take the flavor of what you cook it in, and. Uh, I mean, it's really a good addition to the chili. I was more concerned about the black olives, to be honest with you, than the well, mushrooms. <laughs> black olives actually meld very good into the flavor of it. Like I said, again, it's also a personal taste thing, but for me, it really, it really melds well with the chili, and it adds a lot of extra flavor to it. And you get a few things you don't really expect from it that way. Well, it wouldn't be everything but the kitchen sink <laughs> if we didn't have everything but the kitchen sink. This is true. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've almost got the meat browned. Mm -hmm. um, and this is ground chuck he's using because he says it puts off a little less grease, which is a good thing, I guess. Not that this is a healthy recipe, but. <laughs> All right, and then what's our next step gonna be, Tony, once this meat's browned? We've got another type of meat that we're gonna add to yeah, this chili. Yeah, I add stew beef to it also, and as I'll show you here, uh, after I get done browning this, is that basically what you need to do with the stew beef here, I'll stir this right. for you while you're okay. taking care of that. Is uh, you cut it up because uh, most stew beef will come in uh, uh, cube size, but they're bigger than this. So especially for chili, if you want to add this kind of solid meat to it, what you need to do is take your your pieces and cut them down to smaller sizes. And also, since it's a uh, it's a a chili, I like to take the pieces that have got uh, the extra fat on them and cut the extra fat off before I put them into my chili. So basically, you just take it and slice down the fat, then cut, uh, cut it down to bite-sized pieces so that you've got, uh, you don't have a big chunk of meat to chew while you're eating your chili. And do you find that, you're using a ceramic knife, do you find that that's one of the best knives to use when you're cutting the fat off of meat or? Well, I like to cook and for years I was one of those, um, I guess knife snobs where you go out and you buy a real good set of steel American made knives and you sharpen them all the time. And I still am, I love the knives I got at home, but. This guy right here is $10 from uh, Walgreens, and I've never had to sharpen it, and I'm telling you, you can shave the hair off your arm with it. It's Ooh, just but that, we're not gonna do that while no, we're cooking. No, <laughs> but it is just that sharp. So yeah, I, I really do believe in these now. They've, they, they've uh, converted me. Awesome, okay, I'm another, making a mess here. Yeah, another thing about this, you'll notice that especially stew beef, they'll have a vein of fat that runs through the middle of them sometimes. And if you can save those pieces, or just trim around those veins because that's really not much fun to chew up in a chili. No. So you basically just cut that piece out like I did there. And it's a little bit of waste, but you know, it makes your chili better. Anything that you can do to enhance the flavor is yeah. awesome in my book. Yeah. Well, you know, I like cooking with fat and a lot of stuff because the fat actually enhances the flavor, but you've got so much flavor going on in a bowl of chili anyway, you don't really need it. You know, there's so much other stuff happening, and uh, you get plenty of the, the fat and stuff out of that meat there also. So right. Yeah, you're not really missing it for, with, from this right here. Okay, does this look about as brown as you normally get it? And yeah, that's some pretty good shape. Before you add shape. it? That's okay, so we're going to drain this off and get the stew meat in the pan. I always wash, wash my hands every time I use meat before I do anything else. It's a smart thing washing your hands. Keep washing your hands throughout the process, especially any time that you handle raw beef or any kind of raw meat for that matter. Right. Do you want me to bring the pot? No, it's okay right now. In? It's all right right now. It needs to drain for a little bit first, so let's uh, okay. let it sit there. And you add the stew beef in. I'll take that for you. All right. Kinda now we got a little left over here. Let's make sure you get all there, that good yeah, meat yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. He should escape. <laughs> okay, so now what do we season this with? Or? Same thing, just okay. garlic salt. Okay. Do you want me just to sprinkle a little yes, in here? Yes, let's go ahead and... Now at what point do we add the onion, Tony? Um, do we add as it far to as the, the chili, uh, well, I used to cook them with the meat, but honestly, it's better if you just put it in the chili because, again, you want all the flavors to kind of meld together. And right. the onions sort of do the same thing. Okay. You know, they'll do exactly the same thing. So just put them in there raw. Okay. And you've got a sweet onion here that you're using today. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. what you usually prefer for this recipe? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just a regular old yellow onion is, is, uh, is as good as uh, anything else for this, this, uh, for this particular dish. Yeah, red <laughs> onion tends to be a little strong so i think the, the sweet will be good yeah. you know onions a cool thing too because uh, you know onions bitter when you first bite into it but you know if you heat up just a little bit they get really sweet Mm-hmm. that's pretty neat you didn't think i knew all that did you i didn't okay sorry <laughs> 
All right, so once we get the beef stewed, we're gonna add it to the pot. Mm -hmm. And what are we gonna do at that point? Are we gonna use any seasonings then or taste it to see where after, we're at? After we or? get all the meat and ingredients, which the meat's the only thing we have left. Once we get the meat in there, get this brown and get the meat in there, then we'll let it heat until it comes to a slow boil. And then, yeah, you'll, uh, about every 20 minutes or so, you taste it, uh, see if you like what you got. If you don't, you know, you play around a little bit. That's what the, the, the one of the main ingredients in chili, or best ingredients, the cumin, the paprika, and the chili powder. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the base to any chili powder you're, or chili mix you're going to buy. So you can use those, you know, add a little garlic here and there, whatever kind of suits you. I'm a big fan of cumin. Love it. Yeah. Love it. But now you could, we were talking about it earlier. You said the old El Paso seasoning, but you could use this. You could use any sure. type of your favorite seasonings. Yeah. You could put anything, since it's everything but the kitchen sink, you yeah. could put any of your favorite ingredients in it. I like the old El Paso. My mother has uh, been making, since I was old enough to remember eating chili, uh, she used that old El Paso chili seasoning, and it, it has a different flavor than the rest of it does. Mm -hmm. And I can't predict exactly what it is that's in there, but you know, it kind of reminds me of being a kid, I guess. And, uh, yeah. So I'm still using it. It is very good, but it's getting hard to find. The only place I can find it these days is at Junior's. And some days they got it, some days they don't. Guess what? Yesterday they didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people must be big fans of that seasoning mix. So, it's and it's getting weather for this chili. And like he said, football games. You know, you're going to have a lot of holiday gatherings coming up. This would be awesome to carry to any of those events. I'll tell you a good tip about chili in general, or at least for my chili anyway, I like to make it the night before and then let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. Because man, there's just something about giving uh, the, the, getting it time to set and then heat it back up and it just, just enhances the flavor a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is gonna be good to eat as soon as we get it all heated up together. And, uh, but uh, if you let it set for overnight in the refrigerator, it's gonna be that much better. Some things just taste better the next day. Spaghetti, True, yeah. chili. Yes. True of leftovers, so it's going to be true of chili. That's right, that's right. Leftover chili is a delicacy around my house. It is, and you can make it into a taco salad like the next day. You don't have to just eat the straight up chili. If you're going to eat it for a few days, play with it a little bit. Now, Tony, about how long have you been cooking this recipe? Is this something that you cook at the firehouse or? I, I haven't done it as much lately as I used to, but it used to be every Sunday I'd make this somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's a handful of people up there that probably still remember me making it from back in the day. And occasionally I'll still make it out there at Station 3. You know, we'll get, we got a day we're going to be sitting around on a good, cool fall day watching the football games, hoping we don't get a call. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a pot of chili on about 8 o'clock in the morning, and by noon we'll start on it and eat on it all day long. Yeah. And Tony's been with us for about 28 years. He started when he was two years old, right, Tony? <laughs> yeah, back in the dark ages, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I started, we were still riding on the tailboard. Didn't mean to age you there. That's quite all right. Thought that was a nice one. I earned every one of these gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony is also, Tony is a man that wears many hats. He's a musician, he's an actor, <laughs> he's a chef, obviously, he's the captain at the fire station, so. And chief bottle washer. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That looks like it's getting pretty good and brown. Just it's working its way there. Now I'll say something about this the, this meat too. This is solid muscle meat right here. It's, it's a lean meat. And uh, especially if you're going to cook your chili like an hour or so, it's okay to just brown it and not have to worry about cooking it thoroughly because it's going to cook in the chili too. Okay. That way you don't wind up overcooking your meat and it gets kind of rubbery. Right. So you just basically want to make sure that you got everything on the outside uh, cooked, you know, because basically what you're doing is killing surface bacteria. And once that's done, you can put it straight in the chili and let uh, the rest of it heat up inside there. And part of that browning process too is sealing in the flavor of the mm -hmm. meat, is that correct? Yes, that is very true. At least that's what my yeah. mama taught me. Yeah. <laughs> like a solid muscle meat like this, you can use it really, really use a high heat. Like I've got it on seven, you could actually cook this on nine as long as you're gonna stand right here and keep doing this the whole time. But I like to keep it a little lower than that because I like to have time to make sure I flip every piece over so that I get it, you know, so they don't brown it too much on one side. Right. Yeah. Now, um, if you'll let me take over this, I mm -hmm. know we need to keep stirring our little pot over here, yeah. so I'll watch this for you and right. we'll make sure that that stays. I think we can go ahead and add the hamburger now. Okay, and I'll, I'll maintain this for you while you do that. Right. This is smelling so good. 
You just can't beat chili on a on any day, really, in my opinion. And just so you know, this is why this is such a stick to your ribs meal. There's three and a half pounds of meat in this pot. Hmm. <laughs> a lot of protein. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's a good hearty firefighter dish. Yeah. Now, it won't last as a leftover in the fire hall, I'm sure. I'm sure there's nothing left in the pot when you cook this at the firehouse. Well, it depends on the crew sometimes, but yeah, there's usually not much left to take home or leave for another shift. Right. <laughs> All right, I think this is pretty much ready too, Tony, if we want to go ahead and drain this and add it to the pot. Yeah. Actually, if you want to, just pick it up with a spatula and put it in there. It doesn't really have to drain that because that's that uh, the juice that runs out of that meat right there is a lot of flavor to it. So okay. it's okay if some of that gets in the pot too. You know, I'm kind of clumsy, so yeah. I don't want to lose any of this meat. I've never, I've never cooked right and had to clean my kitchen thoroughly when I was done. It's not any fun unless you make a mess with it. I know, but it's it's always so much nicer when you've got somebody else to clean up after you make a mess. <laughs> Get your, get your crew out there at three to clean up for you. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now once we've got all this meat in there, mm -hmm. uh, is that at that point you're gonna taste it and see what kind of seasonings it needs yeah. to start out with before you simmer it or? Well, as you can see right now, there's enough heat coming off of it. It's 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 warm now, so okay. we'll we'll get this stirred in there real good. Give it a couple of minutes, and then uh, we'll we'll be begin the process of seasoning. I know I look like a slow poke, but really, it's kind of hard to get with this spatula. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be laughing at me. I'm not. I'm, la I'm laughing with you, not at you. Trust me. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, we've got it all now. And I've made sure to turn this off, so we're good on that. Right. Oh, that's looking good. Smelling good, looking good. Making me a little bit hungry. All right, well, it's, it's heated up long enough. Let's uh, add a few other seasonings. Now, first thing let's do, let's get a small bowl and, uh, and just taste it and see what we got. Okay. I'm gonna let you taste it because you know what it's supposed to taste like, so. All right, so you just basically get enough out to give yourself a couple of good tastes of it. Okay. And what you're really tasting for, is it hot enough? Uh, has it got enough spice to it? Is it bland? You know, because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's not always the same pot, you know? Right. You, you try to, I, I get it pretty close most times, but sometimes I've got to, to uh, and I, even when I don't have to, I usually still play around with it some. Right. Just mix it up a little bit. Grab your spoon. Let's get your opinion on this, because honestly, <laughs> I think this is pretty close. Okay. Let's see. If it were me, I wouldn't add anything at this point. It's pretty good. <laughs> and there you go. Like I said, we added the, the, the garlic salt is what brought it up to give it that extra flavor right there that's in the meat. But we're going to let this simmer for how long, Tony, to make sure that the meat's all the way cooked through and soft? What we need to do at this point is let it cook about 20 minutes. Okay. You know, make sure we keep a good stir on it. Let it cook about 20 minutes and then taste it again. Because like I said, 20 minutes from now, some of that flavor, that flavor may fade away. So okay. you have to, that's when you want to try it again. Now, do we want to cover it with a, t a uh, that's or? if you're going to cover it with a pot, I suggest turning the vo uh, the volume. <laughs> Pardon me, turning the heat down to five or lower. Okay. Uh, and uh, make and sure you keep an eye because what happens when you put the top on it? Obviously, it's going to boil faster. Right. Because it holds that heat in. But, but yes, we'll just, I mean, we can yeah, simmer you can it just leave it like top. that, or okay. yeah. And I'm going to move this. You actually have a pot that's completely finished mm -hmm. uh, that you cooked up for us already. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move this and let's get that pot out and let's okay. give it a taste. All right. All right. We warmed this up a little earlier, and hopefully it's still warm. All right, I'm going to make me a 
a bowl this time because it was good. I'll make you a bowl too, Tony. All right. You just really can't beat chili. I mean, it, this is just the smell, the the look, the flavors, just everything. It's just I love chili. Now, generally, when I eat this at home, like I said, I got a bunch of friends sitting around watching football, or even when I just make a pot at home, I like to put a little hot sauce on top of it. Some people like cheese, other things. Me, I just a little bit of hot sauce and occasionally salt and pepper. I like cheese and oyster crackers, or whip up some cornbread and put some cornbread in there. Mm. You said I'm talking about letting it set overnight and see how that kind of adds to it. It really developed the flavors. Yeah. It's awesome, awesome. When we come back, we've got another great recipe for you. I've got two words for you, bacon bomb. We're back, and now that Tony has shared his chili recipe with us, we're moving on to bigger and better things. I'm super excited about this next recipe because I love bacon. We're gonna be making some bacon bombs, and you're gonna need the following ingredients. One pound of chorizo sausage or country sausage, two packs of bacon, one bottle of your favorite barbecue sauce or make your own, one jar of banana peppers or jalapenos sliced, one sweet onion sliced, and any of your favorite seasonings. All right, Tony, let's get started on these bacon bombs. I'm like, I wanna eat them right now. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, as you mentioned in the, the uh, recipe thing there, you could probably get by with one pack of bacon. I always get the, set, the second one in case I need more. You know, that's you're that. always gonna need more bacon. Yeah, that's always. true. There's no such thing as too much. You can eat bacon while you're making uh, this. And you know? uh, chorizo, which is Mexican sausage, you can use for this, or if you don't like chorizo, just any kind of country sausage will work. The stuff with the sage is really good. Um, mm. This one right here uh, is just a regular country sausage. This is uh, some spices that I make up at home. It basically consists of paprika, chili powder, um, salt, brown sugar, uh, and uh, to my own taste. <laughs> and what you do is just sprinkle it over the padded out sausage. And you can use any of your favorite seasonings. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think like smoked sea salt or something sure, to yeah. that nature would be good too. Yeah. yeah, again, like I said, every recipe I make is uh, always to taste. Uh, whoever taught it to me or wherever I learned it at, the first thing I do is try to change it up some so that's more mine than theirs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> always got to make it more yours. Yeah, and once you've got that down, take you some uh, sliced jalapenos. And you don't need a lot of these things in the inside of it because you're going to put this on the sausage. But, uh, you know, to, again, to taste, and I like to take them and just uh, quarter them, basically, so that you don't wind up with, uh, you know, just a whole one in one bite. You want to kind of be able to spread this around a little. If you want to tame the heat a little bit, you said you could use banana peppers? Yeah, or they make mild jalapenos, too, and these are actually mild right here. You can sit and eat these, and they won't hurt you. I mean, there's a little heat to them, but uh, they're not going to be one of those that uh, just set you on fire and make you, right. you know, wish for a glass of milk or something. <laughs> I never understood the milk and hot thing. I know it tames it, but milk well, after you eat something hot. It's supposed to coach you taste buds. Does it work? Don't ask me. It might, I don't know. Let's add a couple more just cause I am okay. adventuresome. This is smelling good already and the bacon's <laughs> not even going. <laughs> All right, and uh, add you a few onions. Okay, and this is sliced sweet onion? Mm-hmm. Okay, or diced rather. And once you got that on, I'm gonna add you a little barbecue sauce. I got Sweet Baby Ray's here. Use your favorite. Or make your own. Yeah. Tony usually makes his own, but we're cutting corners a little bit today. And as you can see, you just kind of spread it around there. Then it comes where it gets tricky at. <laughs> and what you want to do is you want to roll your sausage. And depending upon the sausage, some of it's easy, some of it's not. Yeah. yeah. And you want to kind of roll it into a loaf is what you're trying to do here. So you grab it and you continuously roll it until it starts folding over on top itself. As you can see, this sausage right here is a little sticky, so you got to be a little, some of them you got to be a little more careful with. Now, is the chorizo more firm? I mean, will it? Yeah, the chorizo, like some of the other country sausages don't, uh, are not as sticky as this one is. This one's just kind of, but the key is to make Kinda a nice sticky. little loaf out of it. Yeah, yeah, roll it up. And then uh, spread you some more 
of the seasonings on it. Now you can actually just take the whole thing when you get laid out flat and, and do this also. Me, I like to roll it because that way I don't uh, wind up having to repat it out every time. Right, right. Yeah. And it would be kind of hard to flip it with the onion and the jalapeno mm -hmm. and everything on it. As you see, it's kind of coated good with all the, se all the seasonings. Now comes the fun part. And, and that's I'm making the bacon lattice. And this is uh, what really makes a bacon bomb cool. And you I'm totally going to let you do it because there's <laughs> no way I could follow right. these instructions. You, you need uh, some thick sliced bacon. Uh, the thin stuff really doesn't cover this. You want to lay out five equal pieces. As you can see, this bacon right here is kind of already in pieces already. So you got to be careful with it when you do this. Some bacon is easier to work with than others. This is going to be fun. My tummy is already growling. I'm ready for this to be over with so I can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't appreciate your labor that you're putting into this, Tony. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> you lay out five equal pieces. Then you lay a, part, a piece across the center as such. And then what you do is you go back, you grab your first piece and fold it over. Grab your third piece, fold it over. Grab your fifth piece, fold it over. Take another piece, lay it there. Bring these pieces back over. Then you grab your first or excuse me, your second and your fourth piece, fold it back, lay another piece in there, lay it back over it, and then you repeat the process for the top. So, one, three, and five, you roll back, lay the bacon there, the piece is over, and that piece right there has kind of come loose on its own. <laughs> There's always one's got to fight you. That's right. Fold these two back. Lay in another piece. And there's your bacon lattice. And you want to make sure that the bacon is close together as you can get it. That way you don't have any gaps in it. And then comes the fun part. Moving <laughs> your sausage loaf. That's more beautiful than any uh, basket I've ever seen, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> On to your... Uh, bacon weave. Once you got it on there, then you grab the bacon. I'll hold this for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Get hands underneath it and just roll. And what you come up with is that right there. It's a big bunch of awesomeness. Yeah. So basically you got that completely covered. Then I'll lay you another piece across the top of it. Why not? Yeah. Well, there, this right here serves a purpose, actually. Um, this is a pretty big loaf, so this one right here is not one that's easy to do it with. But what you can do is you can cover the ends oh, okay. with it right there and tuck in all your loose bacon into that piece because they'll stick to it. See? Like that. All right, now what you want to do that you've got it this way is you want to put you some more barbecue on it because what goes best in the world with bacon? Barbecue. Anything. Okay. I was going to say anything. Well, I mean, other than more bacon. <laughs> now you want to take a, a brush or this right here, and you just want to kind of spread it out over the top of it. Spread it out around the sides. Cover it as well as possible. So you turn it this way. Put a little more on it. I think we need to invent a time warp machine so that we can hurry this up so I can eat this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not far from putting her in the oven. Okay, good. You heat your oven to about 350. And how long are you going to cook it for? Uh, about an hour and 15 minutes usually does it. Uh, if you've got a thermometer, you need to get it done. This is sausage, which means it's ground, so you want to cook it thoroughly. You want the interior to be at least about 185 degrees. That's usually a good done temperature for sausage. 
All right, let's go ahead and transfer this to the pan. Okay. All right. Here's another fun part. A little nerve wracking to be right honest with you. And once again, wash my hands. Okay, and I'm gonna get this in the oven for you. Not yet, not yet. It doesn't oh, go in just yet. yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. See, I'm rushing it again because I'm ready to eat it. Because <laughs> now that you we've got it on the pan, we got still gotta dress it up a little bit. Now I've got a, okay. a smoky barbecue salt here. You can use anything you like, and truth is, this right here just tastes really good is why I put it on there. And you can put it inside of it too if you want to. I like to put it on the outside because it kind of cooks it into it a little. Basically just back and forth on it. There you go. And set that out of the way. Now, you pretty okay, it up. I get it now. <laughs> I get it. Because the only thing that goes better than bacon and barbecue is bacon, barbecue, and jalapenos. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you put this in a uh, pre preheated 350 degree oven. And about once every 20 minutes or so, you're going to want to open it up and baste it again with the barbecue. But in order to save a little time, I've already made one. Yes! <laughs> no time work machine needed. This is what your finished product looks like. Look, I had a knife ready. I must have had a sneaking <laughs> suspicion. And that is a cooked bacon bomb. You want to get a good bark on it, that's when you know it's done. When it's, good, when it's got a good bark like that on it. I'm not even giving you a plate. I'm just going to put the whole thing on my plate. <laughs> I'm going to get some of it, trust me. <laughs> and you're getting the best piece right there, the end piece. Uh -huh. Why do you think I cut this mm -hmm. one for me? I'm going to let you cut your own because I'm going right. to be busy over here trying okay. this goodness mm -hmm. over here. Having a hard time cutting it? Um, well, <laughs> it's because I'm too excited. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna not be ladylike, and I'm just gonna do what I can. Yeah, this is this is this is fun. This food. is mainly firehouse food, yeah. anyway. <laughs> mm. So good. <laughs> well, let me join you. You get two thumbs up on that, Tony. All right, thank you. And the bacon does have a nice sweet crust on it. It's so good. Mm. That is hard to beat right there. Okay, we're gonna get this stuff washed down with a nice low calorie mocktail. Join us back in a few minutes. Well, Tony, since you've shared your awesome recipes with us today, I've got a little treat for you. This is my own special little mocktail. It's low calorie. It's diet cranberry juice. We've frozen it in an ice cube tray, and you see how pretty they are in these clear glasses. They look good. And we're just going to pour some lemon lime soda in. My um, soda, lemon lime soda of choice is Sprite Zero. It's part of what makes it low calorie. It's colorful. It, see how beautiful it is? And then you just serve it with a twist of lime. And we're going to do a little toast to you, Tony. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you to the Discovery Center for letting us borrow their awesome demonstration kitchen. You can find all the recipes that we made today on our website at www.murfreesborotn.gov slash cookingwithmfrd. Join us next time. Mm -hmm.